Welcome back to part three in a four-part series designed to quickly help educators learn how to use Adobe Captivate. Let's get started. So as you remember, in our project last time, we had imported all of the images and added them to our process layout on the second slide. And I suggested you go ahead and put these captions in. You can see examples of the captions here. And of course, there's an example of the entire project inside your project folder. Now, the next thing for us to do is actually to break it down and create a detailed slide that describes each element in the overall process. So to do that, you're going to want to go up here to the upper left-hand corner and click again on the plus symbol for new slides. Click on content slide to add a new content slide. You'll notice that the content slide comes in with the layout that you last selected. That's the layout for the process, but we don't want a process for the, the informational slides. We actually want to use a different one. So instead, let's use caption and content right, choosing them from the master slide. Remember, you have to select the entire slide. Do that by clicking on the slide in the thumbnail and come over to the right hand side and choose caption and content right. If you want to just be different, you could also choose caption and content left. It's really up to you. There are a number of different slide layouts that you can choose to work from. Now, once you have that content in, we're going to want to actually add the content, but before we do that, let's customize this slide so it's ready for interactivity. Now remember that step where we go to the actions panel while the whole slide is selected. If your whole slide isn't selected, you won't see this panel, right? So remember, click the slide itself in the thumbnail, make it all selected, choose the actions panel, and then finally on exit, let's choose the pause. That will pause the slide so it doesn't just keep going. Now we actually want three more of this kind of slide so we can have one for each phase of the water cycle. Good. With the slide selected, I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to use Control C on my PC or Command C on my Macintosh. And that's a shortcut to copy the slide. I could also right click on the slide and choose copy from that menu as well. Once I have that, I'm just going to paste more copy. Now it's important to note that I did that on exit function before I made my copies. To paste, I can simply do control V on a PC or command V on a Macintosh. And you'll notice I've actually pasted the slide three more times. So now I have one, two, three, and four. Notice also that the action to pause on exit has been copied along with the rest of the content on the slide. Now, as you start working on projects, you're going to find that it's helpful to name the project. So the slides for each project have names that appear on the right-hand corner, the upper right-hand corner of the property inspector. I've selected the first slide, and here I would put something like intro or introduction to identify that this is the introductory slide. The second slide describes the entire process. So here I would put process to explain that that is the process slide. The third slide obviously is going to be about condensation, precipitation, transpiration, or evaporation, in whichever order you wish to present those particular slides. So you want to name each one of those appropriately. Here I'll name these condensation, and so on. Now, in the slide itself, you're going to want to also put the name of the slide content. So you can simply put it in here. Or if you prefer to cut and paste, you can also go into that handy little notepad of definitions. So you'll see here you've got the definitions. Here's condensation. Copy that. Control C on a PC or Command C on a Macintosh. Then I'll come over here and grab that definition. Again, Control C or Command C, depending on your platform. And Control V or Command V to paste that content. So I repeat that process for each one of those slides. And then when I'm ready to add the corresponding image, 
I'll just check to make sure I have the right image. The image is the cloud. So I click here, and then I'm going to click plus image. But this time I'll do something slightly different. Now remember before we imported the image, but we've already got the condensation image imported. All we have to do is click on it here in our library and bring it across. That's because Captivate will give you all of that content inside of this folder called the library, and it'll keep that all on hand, so you don't have to keep re-importing it. But notice that this image has stretched to fill the entire area defined by that image placeholder. And in this case, we don't want that image to be quite so large. So to fix that problem, we're actually going to click on the Properties Inspector, and then select the image, and then choose Reset to Original Size. And that will reset this image to its original size. Now just hold down the shift key and click and drag this corner arrow to resize that image so that it's both the right height and width ratio and the right size for that particular slide. So now you've got a nice condensation image, you've got a condensation caption, you've got condensation as your subtitle to the slide. You might decide that you want to have the water cycle up here throughout, or you might want to list that as condensation. It's really up to you. Repeat that process for each one of the remaining slides for each of the categories. Mm -hmm.